As I was driving home from work recently, I was listening to a podcast discussing serial killers because, well, I'm an adult and can do what I want. But the host on the podcast began talking about sociopaths and discussing what some of the symptoms behind the personality disorder were, and my mind went where it normally does, to the office. A lot of what they were talking about actually sounded a lot like a character who's in a solid amount of the show, but for some reason I never really gave too much thought to, Ryan Howard. So let's look back at the series and try to figure out, is Ryan actually a sociopath? And of course, consider this your official spoiler warning for the entirety of The Office, despite it being the show we talk about most on this channel. And hey, while we're here, comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next, it definitely helps the algorithm not hate my channel. I want to start this off by saying, I am not a psychologist. Please take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt and do not use anything I'm going to be talking about to diagnose either yourself or someone else. Before we get into everything, we should look at how Ryan's changed throughout the series because, well, he's a vastly different character as the seasons go on. In fact, most of the characters change pretty drastically. This is a process typically referred to as flannerization, which just means that as the show goes on, a character's traits become more and more exaggerated. For example, in early seasons, Kevin is seen as not the brightest, but in later seasons, well... He is not an idiot! Thank you, Holly. He is mentally challenged. But he's doing a super job here. Wait, back up. Flannerization is seen more commonly in background characters like Kevin, but it definitely takes place in more prominent characters like Ryan as well. In the first few seasons, Ryan is much more of a straight man, similar to Jim, but less pranky and generally more resentful of The Office. But by the end of the series, Ryan seems to be full-on neurotic, making insane decisions on a whim. Now let's talk more about what exactly being a sociopath means. Today's sociopathy is categorized under the more broad Antisocial Personality Disorder, or APD. This is a personality disorder that is categorized as a long-term pattern of disregard for or violation of the rights of others. This does include the general lack of a conscience, meaning that, in simpler terms, a person with APD feels little or no guilt no matter what exactly they do. They do what they want to get what they want with no regard as to how it might affect other people in their way or around them. The easiest example that a bunch of people are familiar with would be Dennis Reynolds' character in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I am having, this is crazy, but I'm having feelings again. It, like, like some kind of 14-year-old kid or something. I mean, you remember feelings, right? Yeah, I have feelings every single day of my life. Do you? Are you saying you don't have feelings? With Dennis actually, quote, getting off after pretending to be someone else who he may have actually even killed. Though Dennis does exemplify a pretty drastic side of the personality disorder, there have also been real life examples that aren't too far off of his behavior. Ryan would obviously be nowhere near as severe as Dennis, but he would still be exhibiting at least some of the symptoms associated with antisocial personality disorder. After doing some research, I was able to find a list with some symptoms. Let's go through these and see how Ryan stacks up, starting with... Ryan, at least early in the series, is pretty charming and well-spoken. You kind of need to be to be successful in business. And despite his eventual fall, which we'll get to soon enough, he does succeed initially, being promoted at the end of Season 3 to Vice President of Northeastern Sales, Jan's former position. Say what you want about Ryan's abrasive personality, the man can definitely talk circles around a lot of people despite being an absolutely terrible salesman. Throughout the series, Ryan takes advantage of and rips off many of his co-workers at the office. There are a bunch of examples to this, including Ryan somehow getting Pam to give him money, claiming he has an algorithm that can determine the outcome of any college basketball game. Instead, what we're going to be focusing on is Woof. Woof is a business idea that Ryan not only steals from Kelly and passes off as his own, but convinces several Dunder Mifflin employees, including Michael, to invest in the idea. When Ryan actually gets a buyer for the fledgling company, he refuses to sell, despite the fact the buyer only wants the company for the domain name. He convinces Michael not to sell, and Michael, the majority shareholder, leaves the decision completely up to Ryan, who, under the pressure, sells the company. Which actually leads us to the next symptom. While Wolf is a pretty good example of Ryan's unreliability, his irresponsibility and inability to follow up on anything is a pretty big part of his character throughout the entirety of the series. With my favorite example being when Ryan is hired by the Michael Scott Paper Company. He spends a bunch of his time at the company not doing any work and talking on the phone to his friends, basically just ignoring the job. Something that continues with his eventual rehiring at Dunder Mifflin. We'll cover these next two points at the same time because they kind of go hand in hand. 
When Ryan's plan for Dunder Mifflin Infinity begins to fail, Ryan comes up with a plan to lie to the shareholders and commit fraud. And in doing this, Ryan is hitting both of these notes to a T. But his lying doesn't really stop there. He's willing to lie about anything to seem more deep and artsy. Huh? I know a few of his songs, but what were his big ones? Oh God, Nelly, what wasn't his? I mean, um, Tracks of My Tears? Yeah. Um, God, so many, Nelly. No, no, no. Tracks of My Tears and what else? What are some more? What's one more? Ryan's general lack of remorse is best exemplified in his on-again, off-again relationship with Kelly, who we surprisingly haven't talked about much yet. To say Ryan is mentally abusive to Kelly would be a huge understatement. He cheats on her, breaks up and gets back together with her, especially when there's something that'll help him, and even gets her to break up with her current significant others. Let's focus on that last part because there are two major instances of that happening. The first happens in Season 5's business trip. Ryan returns to Dunder Mifflin Scranton while Kelly is dating Daryl. Ryan decides to put the moves on Kelly, despite her being in a relationship, by dropping down and really getting into some push-ups, which Kelly is able to resist until... After Kelly and Ryan finish making out, Ryan not only tells Kelly to break up with Daryl, but he has already written out a full breakup text on Kelly's phone for her to send to Daryl that Ryan actually makes her send herself. A few seasons later, after Ryan and Kelly get divorced, after revealing they've gotten married, Kelly begins dating a pediatrician. She eventually decides to move with him to Miami, Ohio, and Ryan coincidentally moves there as well. Much later in the series, in the finale actually, Ryan shows back up with a baby, convinces Kelly to break up with her boyfriend after poisoning his baby. You gave your baby an allergic reaction just to talk to me? And the two of them run off together, abandoning the baby that Ryan brought with him. And don't worry, baby Drake is adopted by Nellie. Let's look at everything together now. Ryan has definitely hit the vast majority of the symptoms. So in my unprofessional opinion, I would say that yes, Ryan appears to be a sociopath. But like I said earlier, that doesn't mean he's Dennis Reynolds levels of sociopathic. I mean, it's not like there was some murderer running around Scranton during some of Ryan's craziest times, right? But anyways, this has been 10K Bill and thanks for watching. Comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next. Follow me on Twitter at 10kbill, support us on our Patreon, and of course, make sure you subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.